Hi. Hi. I'm Shane. I'm Anne. And we have this video that we've compiled to make things a little easier for you. We've compiled some things that will help you move forward with your with your plant-based journey if you're going to be plant perfect or plant strong. And we've chosen four different sections that are, we feel are almost the most important foundation to have moving forward. Uh, one of them is how to cook an onion. And it also on the onion one we have how to cook mushrooms. How to cook mushrooms. No and, oil. Yeah, don't, no oil is a very important guideline for us uh, for the way that we are touting. And also how to make dressings. Uh, we make a couple of dressings. I think we do th two or three on the video included. And also learning a good salad dressing is key to getting is. to eat plant-based whole food. No oil. It is. And another video about how to get greens, 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 greens into your life. In all different ways, whether it's just surprising, normal, just as a pile in your food, beside it, on top of it, mixed in. Cooked in, chopped up. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Bye. These are plant perfect guidelines. This is squarely for people who have heart disease. So this, if you want to follow along. Or anybody. Not anybody who's interested in, in preventing and reversing heart disease. Um, actually, it's, it's great at uh, preventing and reversing type 2 diabetes and obesity and uh, on and on. So page 1213 is where it starts here in our book, the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook, if you want to follow along. The guidelines are there. Our guidelines. This is not plant strong. This is plant perfect. Plant strong um, varies a little bit. So if you want to follow along, here we go. First guideline. You go. Oh, no meat, no fowl, no pork, no beef. No chicken. No chicken, no mussels. No white meat of chicken. No shrimp, no bivalves, nothing. With a mother. Nothing with a face or nothing that poops. Okay, on to the next. <laughs> no dairy. No dairy. And that means no milk, no yogurt, no ice cream, no cheese. No butter. And cheese is often the hardest, but it is such an important thing to get out of your diet. Yeah. So dairy is it is not lots of the like creepy forms it comes in not creepy but like it creeps in on many different forms uh, in different products and stuff. So and along with no with dairy, dairy, there is one helpful thing. If you really are committed to no dairy, then it's going to make it much easier to say no to the cakes and the cookies and the pies that people offer. And there are ways to make cookies and cakes. Without dairy. Oh, and that makes, so dairy oddly has the uh, eggs fit into the dairy category and eggs fit into the meat category. But eggs are out. Eggs are out. So, yeah, no eggs. No eggs. Next is no, no oil. No oil. That sounds hard, but truly, it's the easiest of them all. You go home, or you are home, and you get rid of your oil. I think it's actually the hardest for people. Dang. It's the easiest because you have no oil and it's, any liquid will work. At home, it's easy. But when you're going out, going to friends' houses, oil is just sort of, it's, it's used. It's, 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 it's like sunscreen all over all the fruit and vegetables in the pan when they're cooking even a pasta sauce or even pasta or even like the rice at Chipotle. I'm so upset they put a cup of rice per bin, a cup of oil per bin of rice. It keeps it, it from clumpy. Sometimes I've even discovered when I've gone to get raisins in bulk that they oh. will put oil in the raisins so they don't clump. So, And oil is like, you know when you have a little, your dry skin, you need, a, you need lotion and you're at the bottom of your lotion bottle and you're bang, bang, bang trying to get it out. That little bit of lotion you get out, it actually can go a long way. Well, same with the oil all over inside. So a, a little bit of oil, get rid of all the oil. Okay. Next, we, we want to make sure people get in the plant perfect, um, plant based eating is oats. And For oats, find a way to eat oats. And I wanted to just show these two different examples of that. We find these are the best kind steel well, cut oats. Wait a minute, just one minute. You go. The first oat is the whole oat, the oat groat, which takes a long time to cook, and it, it, people like it. If you've got it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Second in line are the steel cut oats. That's the oat groat that's been chopped by a steel blade. 
about two or three times. These are my favorite because they keep the oat, whatever you're cooking, a little crunchy. But then the oats, the old-fashioned oats, are the ones that most people consider using in their oatmeal. It's, it's this that's been Those and rolled. are the three oats, the oat groats, the steel cut, the old-fashioned, use. Anything underneath that, like the uh, quick, uh, quick, cook, quick cook cookie notes, have, go to sugar quickly. So stick to everything up above the quick cooking. And there are four reasons why it's wonderful to eat oats. One, they are totally help reduce your cholesterol. Two, they help reduce inflammation. Three, they're dose responsive. The more you eat, the more effective. And four, what is four? <laughs> oh, they help keep your blood sugar nice and steady. Yeah. So, you know, and the other thing I think is so important is when you're eating food, try and think of the food that's going to be the most powerful to make a difference. And you're in control at breakfast almost always, so you can get to the oats. And get in greens every day if you can. That's, uh, that's, that's another one of our... The, so we, we actually have a video about how to get at least six... How to get greens in six times a day. Let me go back. We have no meat, et cetera, no dairy, no oil, oats for breakfast. Or whenever in the day. And now we want to talk about the power of greens and all of the vegetables, actually. Not just greens. I know, but, but, but all but, of the many colored leafy vegetables. Greens are, yeah. Leaf, leaf, just greens, greens, greens um, in your day as often as you can. I mean, I think most people just sort of don't think about putting greens in their Speaking of greens, diet. here's we have dedicated our book to greens. To and this is my, a, my we, have a, we have a T-shirt that um, that says this is now. my husband's little um, what do you call that little saying little and people try, try to call it a wrap, but he's by no means wrapping it when he says it. <laughs> um, bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collards, collard greens, beet greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, napa cabbage. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, arugula, and asparagus. And, and there's actually oh. some of the most powerful of those. I mean, and they're all good. And everybody, everything has a different piece to add. So mix them up. Don't just focus on spinach because you're not going to get all you want, all you need. So do the whole range. But the, the most powerful ones are arugula and uh, uh, bok choy. I mean, not bok choy, um, beets and beet beet greens, greens, kale, um, spinach. What did I get? What did I miss? Anyway, greens. Greens and all veggies. Um, other thing, the next thing is beans, lentils, or as categorically they're known as pulses. Not like pulses, but, but um, that sort of legumes. And we try to get these into, uh, hummus obviously is a very accessible form of bean. Um, and there's, you can add, you know, a black bean hummus or white bean hummus or cannellini bean hummus. All kinds of hummuses are out there. Uh, the hummus is made of chickpeas. And um, for, in soups, it's so great to have, you know, have, make a 20 bean soup if you can find 20 beans to put in. I, I probably couldn't name 20 beans. Um, and you know, and the other thing is, or, put uh, if you're having a salad, put beans in your salad, especially if you want just one meal, one dish in summer. Yeah. Fill it with beans. And last, the other night, we were having a meager dinner, I thought, and I, but we had a nice salad. And I put kidney beans in our salad. And I tell you, my husband and I both just couldn't, we couldn't get enough of that salad with those big kidney beans in it. So bean things, up, bean your life up. I and lentils, too. I mean, lentils are great. Red lentils dissolve quickly. The black and the green will keep their shape better for salads and things. So um, fill your life everywhere you can put it with beans or lentils. I had company to make a comment about them. I can't remember what I was going to say. But on to the next. Onward. So whole grains, whole grains, whole grains. Um, that means, you know, uh, quinoa, barley, uh, whole wheat, wheat berries, um, brown rice. If you're going to eat a grain, make sure it says brown in front of it or whole in front of it because then it's got its whole whole good self that Mother Nature packaged that way. If it says semolina wheat, it's white flour. 
if that hole Organic is not Selena. front of wheat, it is white flour. So you want to get that nice whole grain in. So make sure you read ingredients on those things. Okay. Um, avoid salt and sugar as much as you can. We do say to use minimal salt, minimal sweet. That's our guideline. I know it sounds vague, but we truly do mean it. Um, like in some of our um, salad dressings or some of our sauces, we use a little bit of maple syrup to cut the acid or to um, Actually, but you don't have to, to put it in. Salad. If you don't want to, you don't have to put it in those things. If you ever want to have some kind of a dessert, often you need to have some sweetener. And whether your sweetener is brown sugar, dates, maple syrup, anything, it kind of all acts in the same way. So go as yeah. minimally as you can in that. We chose maple syrup. For a couple of reasons. Um, you want to avoid the fructose in uh, fruit. No, it, it, and, it, it's, it's the lowest one in fructose of all the sweeteners, right? And it's got more to it than just, just the, just sugar. It's got some fluid in there. It's got some minerals in there, and it's ghastly expensive, which is a good governor. Um, and salt, please. I hope you have a, a, a spice rack as, as busy as ours. We've got bins and we overflow because we're, all these spices, all these ways to season our food and flavor our food beyond having it be greasy and salty. Our American palates are so used to like a greased and salted tone or texture to our and, food. And believe me, your tastes change. Oh, yeah. I, I cannot go out and buy a soup or, you know, in, in like at a place where they sell it, a vegan soup. It doesn't taste good to me. It's too salty. Oh. So my taste has really changed. But before you want to add salt to something, Try three things. Try adding lime or lemon. Try adding any kind of hot sauces. Um, I mean, just a little hot sauce. It doesn't have to make it hot. It just will sort of give it some uh, energy. And also... Or other spices and flavors. Any, any kind of spice. Vinegar. Vinegar is the other thing More that acid. really make a difference for me to up. Some, the taste your tongue is ADD. It just wants to be distracted. It wants to have. It wants to be have some stimulus. And it's so used to the sugar, salt, fat, um, and wait, sugar, salt, fat, and, and acid. So give it some spices. Give it some of these acids she talked about. Just give it some attention, and it'll be happy. Our next guideline is to steer for heart disease patients clearly to steer clear of nuts, avocado and coconut. There's and just so much saturated fat in those foods. The, if you don't have heart disease, a, uh, a little handful, a fourth cup of nuts is fine. Or and an especially, avocado. Or avocado. Especially uh, walnuts. But if you have heart disease, it's just better to, to avoid it because you just get into hot water. However, I wanted to show you something that I think is, is amazing. Draw. And that is coconut. Coconut oh, is um, coconut is ninety percent saturated fat. This happens to be fourteen grams of fat in this in one fourth cup, and thirteen of those are saturated fat. I wanted to show you what an uh, inside one of these looks like. I was simply stunned when I opened it. We may need to get a, a knife. It's coconut milk. This is coconut milk. And this is simply straight saturated, saturated fat. fat. And it's 92% and then you might, saturated. In the bottom, there is a little bit of liquid. But look at this. To try and get it out, I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 this shocks me. And in all of the today, you can't buy a vegan ice cream that doesn't have coconut cream in it. This is coconut cream. Use it as an oil, a lotion. Yeah. It's a lovely lotion. <laughs> lovely lotion. Oh, but that actually feels if great. you love but not coconut, on the inside. if you love coconut, buy coconut extract and one teaspoon plus a, a cup of alternative milk of your choice, and you have coconut milk. God, without all of this coconut, I don't know, 
Saturated fat. Yeah. It's just going to rest in those arteries. Mm. So, uh, and then as far as seeds, a few seeds are fine, and we hope that everybody, every day, has at least a tablespoon or two of either chia seed uh, or flaxseed meal. Flax seeds need to be ground or else they go right through you. And they're great, they're great with, uh, I guess, inflammation. And you know, some sesame seeds, some pumpkin seeds sprinkled on things are fine. Um, okay. But don't eat handfuls, don't eat uh, cupfuls. And speaking of eating, I'm gonna talk about drinking. Please drink water. You're gonna save yourself thousands and thousands of cal calories and thousands and thousands of dollars by just only drinking water. Um, and the key it, thing is, chew your food, don't. chew your food, don't drink your calories. Chew, don't drink your calories, chew it. Okay, and that being said, um, look at the ingredients in any product you're purchasing. I knew what I was gonna say, back in the beans comment, I, I had a certain brand of, of kidney bean I would always buy when we were gonna make chili, for example. And I decided to buy a big can of it because we had to buy like 40 ounces of kidney beans or something. And I went to the big can and it had not just kidney beans, but it had high fructose corn syrup, sugar, salt, and a couple other things. And I was just thought, oh, how long have I not been reading the ingredients on this bean can? It just says kidney beans but it had all these added things that are just, it's just unnecessary roughness. I don't oh, need that. One other thing about beans, if you are buying beans in a can, buy the can beans without sodium and you can find them. And if, but best of all is make your own beans. And it, it sounds scary and hard, it's really kind of fun and it doesn't, t it's, not, it's not hard. It's just putting them in a pot, putting water in the pot, and cooking them. We have a video of that coming up soon. Um, and the next thing, the last thing we want to talk about, and this is sort of an addition to uh, this guidelines video, and we didn't talk about it last time, is vitamin supplements. We don't take um, any like nutritional based supplements or vitamins. We do take two things that are sort of more environmental. B12 is something that was found, you know, rolling through in, in streams and, and in the soil. And since we don't drink out of our streams anymore and we don't go from our, the soil to our mouths, we actually have very clean food, which is actually probably a wonderful thing for us as a culture. Um, but we're not getting it um, the way that we sort of, where Mother Nature probably designed us to get it. So we take supplements. And did you bring it? Give an example. I mean, we have, I've got, here, here, B12. We just, we kind of get, um, I don't even know what this country life or, and I'm not, we're not supporting any type of. Well, I, B12. I'm telling you, I love the country life menthol B12s because I love the way they taste. Which, which flavor? It's Your vanilla it, flavor? No, no, no. It's just as country life menthol B12. Well, menthol. Okay. That anyway, is the one that has a good flavor. But, um, but, I, is, but doesn't mean any B12. And, and B12 is, people go back and forth and they, they, yes, make sure you have it in your life. And if you're under the age of 60, um, at least 250 uh, micrograms, um, if not a little more, between 60 and 70, at least 500 micrograms. And if you're over the age of 70, 1,000 micrograms. That's what um, I asked my father what he thought and what he recommended, and we, we just ran a, a, just a survey. And things always change, so that's what we're saying now, and this is, this is, you know, 2019. So it might change greatly, and we are open to that, but that's what we're sticking with right now. Um, and vitamin D, we all know that comes from the sun. It actually is found also in, mu in mushrooms, which don't live in the sun, which is weird. So you should eat some mushrooms every day. <laughs> every day. Like in my breakfast cereal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, vitamin D, uh, we right now, again, level labs are different. Levels change and vary. But we basically want you to be at least to the normal level, even the low side of the normal level. And... That might mean um, getting to like 1,000 to 2,000 units. Um, Micrograms. Uh, several times a week. I know I don't really remember to, in the summer I never do it, but I don't really remember to take it except for a couple of times a week on a good week. So that's all of our guidelines for now, and thank you for letting us do it. I don't do think it. I ever take it. But take what? Vitamin D. <laughs> Good thing she's standing right here. Bones are intact still. All right. Thanks for listening to our guidelines. And remember, 
Read ingredients. That is going to change your life. Yes. Change your life. Read ingredients. Hi, Jane Esselstyn here. This is my mom, Anna Esselstyn. Today we're going to I'm making myself just a little taller. Today we're going to continue with our recipes in our Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook. And sometimes people starting a recipe, they, they use an onion. An onion is a basic, it's the basic beginning stage of almost, almost every recipe that's sort of savory and delicious. And cooking an onion with our guidelines of not using oil in the pan, sometimes people find that to be a challenge. So we're just going to show you how to cook an onion, and actually we're going to show you how to cook mushrooms too. Um, but chop up an onion however you'd like. This has been chopped um, in half and then in half again. You can do a julienne, you can do a fancy uh, diced, uh, however you like it. Uh, half moons. I just kind of do it however I, whatever, whatever strikes me in the moment. And that is cut a little bit into the thirds like so, so or fourths, so we're going to do that. And this pan is on high heat right now, and when you add water and it sizzles like that, it's, in my mind, not quite ready to be... Um, I just put my onions in whenever I want. I never, ever <laughs> worry about heating the pan. But. I like getting it hot enough so that the beads <clears throat> dance around like a pearl on, uh, on a surface. Uh, so hot that they're like, the water's burning or something. Pan's hot enough, water's dancing. Here we go. I wish I had a competing pan. And I actually use, this is our onion board. My husband and I don't like how the flavor of onions can seep into, you know, if you're slicing strawberries or something. So we have an onion board. Look at this great old onion board. I actually got this when I was working for Outward Bound in Costa Rica. We, uh, I'm this instructor for Outward Bound and I had to get a cutting board just to, to use for the hiking trip. And I put this in my backpack like that. And I love this handle to just do it like that. So I've had it for 20 plus years. Even broken its spine once. All right, enough about the cutting board, onion board, garlic board. Just cook the onions. Once you put them in the pan, you simply stir them and pay attention to them out of the gate. They brown nicely, as we can see. See how it's browning even a little bit here? It just works. People think that somehow they need to have oil in the pan. You don't. You just have to have a pan that has a bottom and you have to have a source of heat. And you stir, 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 stir. Once it gets brown enough or it starts to get a darker brown, you can turn it down the heat a little bit. And the moisture from the, the onions seeps out and it's sort Onions of just have much more liquid in them than you realize. And so talk about garlic, because garlic... And garlic, is, garlic, unlike onions, doesn't. So if you were starting with just garlic, you would need to put a little water in the pan. Or broth. Or broth. Or, or beer. Or any kind of liquid. Or wine. And, uh, to start with the garlic. Or whiskey. Did, some, some and you can also, if you find that these onions are getting just a little browner than you want, just throw a little liquid of any kind. They, no, we don't, we don't, we're, we're good now. We're good. You don't need that. Well, I just want to show them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so th th this is good. This is browning beautifully. And I'm going to dial it down a little bit because it's, it's, a, it's a nice brown. It's not singed. It's not, uh, it, smell, it smells delicious. It doesn't smell like it's burning. And God, this is making me hungry. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing how the smell of cooking onions or cooking garlic is a trigger. So speaking of garlic, right about now I would add in the garlic if I had some garlic to go in the recipe we're making. Um, and that would have all this moisture from the onions uh, to help it cook, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't burn. And you don't want to ever burn garlic, so it's better to add it later in your cooking. Okay, and maybe if you can see here, there's some, a little bit of caramelization on the, on the pan. If you add a little water, it lifts some of that great yummy brown caramelization off the pan and it gets it onto the onion. So this, take your time. If you want these to cook light brown for a long time, just take your time and just stir and cook. Have some good music on, have a friend over, whatever you do. Listen to a book on tape while you cook. I love doing that. She blasts NPR the whole time. Um, 
Anyway, these cook down, cook down beautifully and deliciously. If you want to add some of your spices for your recipe now, this is a good time because uh, they really start to blend with that beautiful cooking onion flavor. Okay. I'm going to add a little more water, lift off some more of that caramelization. Okay, maybe we'll come back in a minute or two when these are cooked down a little more. Okay, the onions are cooking back there, and we are going to talk about mushrooms now. When I, I love mushrooms, and my kids are all growing to love mushrooms. I have three teenagers, and it's so exciting to have them be on the mushroom fungi train. Um, I buy sliced mushrooms. Ah, and never. I buy them whole. I like to be able to slice them to this the thickness. This is just thickness. quicker to use. No. And also, if you buy them like that, yeah, they don't last as long so that you can get that's last true. a long time. That's true. And this cooking technique for mushrooms is pretty similar to the cooking of an onion in that you just need a pan, doesn't matter what kind, and you need to have a bottom on that pan and a source of heat. So placing the onions, or sorry, mushrooms in the pan literally flat on the surface is the key. My mom taught I, me this. Yeah, but I just dump them. Well, I, you have to have, you, but, but you're the one taught me that you have to have them all no. in contact, if possible, yeah. no, with no, no, the bottom no, no. of the pan. Right, right, right. But then you do it once they're there. I'm going to go back to my onions. You can just do this like that and let them go. And then what you do is you go away and do something else because the temptation is that something's going to be happening to them that shouldn't. <laughs> so you've got to leave them all alone. Yeah, step away from the pan. Back away. Back to the onions. Yeah, well, the onions are looking great back here, but uh, these make all kinds of beautiful noise when they're whole and you're cooking them. And we'll actually do that another time. But sizzling away right here is the good sign. You can tell the moisture from the mushroom is leaving, and the surface that's touching it is browning. And we really need to wait for five minutes. Ready, go. While these are cooking, I would love to talk to you guys about portobello mushrooms. Actually, you know the. the the first thing that when we changed how we ate 35 years ago, the first thing that we ate were portobello mushrooms because they are so meaty and amazing and they, uh, they're, 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 they're great. Like this alone can be a burger. Just cook this up with a little barbecue sauce on top. Yum. So these mushrooms, they're doing well. They've been, they've been going for almost five minutes, about four and a half minutes. And hey, you want to flip them over? Now, I want to show you something that Jane doesn't know I'm about to do, and she's going to have a fit. But you just watch. Okay, well, let, let, what, let, me, Jane, no, let me turn no, them over. Jane, don't touch them. You take a oh, little God. balsamic vinegar and you just sprinkle a little like that, not very much, and you watch what happens to them. Should I mix them yet? It, it just turn them over. And they are simply incredible. It is stunning. Look at that. They are just beautiful. It's done. Woo! Are you mad? <laughs> no. They are brown and delicious, aren't they? Let's taste one. Mm. Not, wow. That is a good trick. <laughs> she puts vinegar. I was afraid if I told her ahead, she wouldn't let me do it. So I had to do well, it. She puts vinegar on everything. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for watching our video today about how to cook an onion and how to cook mushrooms. Anne's eaten almost all of them, it looks like, but they are delicious. Please try them yourself. If you have any comments or questions, please add them below and subscribe above. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Oh, and goodbye. But one minute. This is the biggest, best looking mushroom. Mm. You've eaten all of them. I know. Bye. Hi, Jane Esselson here with my mom, Anne. And we are going to continue with our Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook videos here. We are working on making dressings today. If you're following along in our cookbook, it's on page 167 on. We got some crazy feedback from Amazon, or a comment on Amazon, when our book first came out. And someone said, 
They love the book, but there are too many dressings. But the thing is that everybody's <laughs> taste is different. And yes. if the key thing is to figure out some dressing that you like, that you love, and that you can use all the time. Yeah, whatever works best so is So we what have tons of ideas here. Yeah, well, um, so we're going to do th three quick ones today. And um, again, they're all in the recipes, or the dressing section of the book. I'm going to start with my quick one called 3-2-1 dressing. It's three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Here's our favorite kind. Three tablespoons balsamic. And what flavor is that one? This one happens to be black currant. And two tablespoons of mustard, any kind of mustard. Just open up the drawer or the door of your refrigerator, and I'm sure you've got like archives of mustard in there. And then one tablespoon of maple syrup. That's the sweetener we prefer to use. Um, we don't like to use sugar or honey and stuff. So three, two, one, there you go. That's the great foundation. And then to this, you can add horseradish, you can add garlic, you can add lemon, you can add lime. How is that? Is that all right? Oh, my, my lemon press. Lemon press. Can't find my lemon press. So I'll use my mom's reamer. I don't like the reamer as much as I like my lemon press. I love but. the reamer. And you know why? Because I don't have to really wash it. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. See, you just go like that. And then you can even wipe You've it. You've got seeds <laughs> in my dressing. <laughs> Actually, I think I got seeds in there too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there it is, three, two, one. And I love a little lemon in mine. And um, I think you got some lemon in the cameraman's eye too. <laughs> 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 and uh, it is good to go. It's got swing. It's got zing. It's awesome. Now, my dressing, on the other hand, uh, I try and avoid using... Um, maple syrup or sweeteners as much as possible. So I start out with a hummus. Now you can make your own hummus. I love the Engine 2 hummus, which has no oil and actually no tahini, which is excellent if you have heart disease. So I will just take some hummus and then I will take an orange. And here, here is an orange. What I've done is the orange that I actually had was kind of small. And I take a knife and I cut out the little sections, put them in, etc. And then I that cut them there. And if I really wanted to get the rest of this out fast, I could just take this reamer, reamer again and do this and get ton that out really quickly. And sometimes, believe it or not. I buy freshly squeezed orange juice, which is a no-no, but I might just be able to use it. if No, I'm, no, to drink. To you drink, mean. to drink, and to, to use it in making this. But I really like taking the whole orange. And then I will take some ginger. Love ginger. Now, you can use the uh, microplane. Oh, we have But I love this little way of grating ginger. And that is you take it and just grind it here like this. And it's a special plate. In this little plate. And then it comes with this special little sort of, what do you call it? It's, it's a brush. A little brush. And you can brush your, your whatever you want into here. Now I also, also plate. this plate's got texture to it. I also like to put in a little turmeric because turmeric is good to put in this any place This also will you work can. if you want to grate your ginger. Yeah. But this also, this is a turmeric root. Turmeric is amazing for, for against, infl to, to keep everything without any inflammation at all in your body. And so this too Ideally. is fun just to grate like this and to put a little bit of that in, in here. And then, I will put a little bit of mustard. Whoops! Everything's <laughs> falling. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Or, or you can, wait a minute. Uh, you can use dried turmeric as well, ground turmeric. Oh, yeah. It's available in any store, in any spice area. So, and then you can add some, some balsamic or some vinegar of some kind. I like, I love the balsamic vinegars. 
Um, we got uh, long ago introduced to the olive tap, which um, has got a thousand different kinds of infused vinegars. Um, and the, the, if you can see these two, this one is a dark one, and this is a, a white vinegar, white balsamic vinegar. And if I want to keep this white, I would use this. And if I want to have it be a darker color, I would use this one. This happens to be black currant. This one is an orange white. So I'll put some of this in, and you'll see that it will it'll keep this a uh, white color. And then mix it up. Now it takes no time, and even if you spill it as you're making it, it is still delicious. And uh, if that's you it. tapped into and my I parents, love, and I love these little little bits of orange that are in this. If you tapped into my parents, like you, like a, you tap into a maple tree to get some syrup, running out of their bodies would be this dressing. They make it every night. It's what works for them. But it's, it's different what they every use. night because it's a different mustard, a different vinegar. It's, it's, but this is the same, um, same general ingredients And if I don't have night. an orange, I might use a, a, a lemon or a grapefruit or a water. All right, some people don't love vinegar as much as the acid queen here loves her vinegar and her lemons and her limes. But... Um, we have a dressing that doesn't have any vinegar in it that we love, and it is made of oat milk, mustard, um, and this, oh, this is called the Sweet Hot Mustard Dressing and Dip. And it's sweet with a little bit of maple syrup. My mom and dad don't like to use maple syrup as, uh, as a regular thing. And here's maple syrup. And it's got some cayenne for the heat. And the original recipe for this dressing had two tablespoons of cayenne. I reduced it down to half a teaspoon of cayenne, and it still is hot. flaming hot. But it's balanced out with the sort of the, the smoothness of the oat milk and the sweet of the maple syrup. And the mustard's just got a nice little zing to it. Um, so, but this, oftentimes at our immersions that we do with Engine 2, this dressing is usually the one we have to keep remaking because people just love it. And the, so the, the official names of these, of these dressings are Jane's Favorite 321, Anne and Essie's Favorite Dressing was the one Anne made, and this is Sweet Hot Mustard Dressing and Dip. So uh, I hope you have fun making recipes that work for you and use them. And so many of my husband's patients actually love some of these really, when you discover the, the deliciousness of some of these balsamic vinegars, they use just the vinegars alone on their salads. Yes, it's great. Okay, thank you for watching this video about making dressings with no oil. We have the official names of our dressings, which are 321, Jane's favorite 321, Anne and Essie's favorite, and sweet hot mustard dressing and dip. These are great to use not only on salads, but also- You could put them on rice. On top, yes, plain rice, plain rice, plain quinoa, any of your greens on top of greens. This is great sometimes to actually dress up your greens so you can get them going, get them in. And so you can even use some of these things to dip your sandwich in if you want your sandwich to have a little more Shazam to it. Any of them are, are great. And there's many more in our book. And Please invent your own. We'd love to hear about it. Comments below. Subscribe above. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy dressing. Bye. Bye. Today we're talking about greens. My dad always talks about eating your greens every day. I'll get a close-up of this picture for the camera. Six times a day for those with heart disease. The size of a fist. So everyone asks, well, how much? What does he mean? Does he mean... Uh, cooked greens or raw greens? And some of the greens he's talking about are the following. I'm going to read them from his t-shirt. This is my dad's t-shirt. Bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, beet greens. I mix those up, sorry. Napa cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, arugula, and, and asparagus. asparagus. So, oh, we don't have asparagus. That's all right. We don't have, I, that's, we don't have asparagus because we ate it last night. Oh. Well, okay, the dangers so, of shopping the night so before. So to start breakfast, um, how do you get greens at breakfast? How about we hope everybody's eating oats for breakfast? You can put greens into your oats easily. I want to quickly show you 
my favorite breakfast, which is here that I'm just putting all out right now into, can you see this? I'm putting this into my bowl. These are my greens. I mean, this is my oats. And in here, I have put this handful of greens like this. And I chop these greens with my trusty little knife. And I just chop it up into sort of bite-sized pieces. And this ends up, if you're actually measuring it, to be about two cups. But I put this, and this is a big fistful, into my oats. And the, we, we cook these cheesy oats. But you can do, I mean, any way you choose. But that makes it so quick and so easy and so delicious. And you don't even know that you're getting all these good greens. Pardon me. So fill your breakfast bowls with greens. So that's breakfast. And then the mid-morning snack. What kind of greens do you want to snack on mid-morning? I thought um, what was kind of a cool thing to consider and what we often do have are beets. And of course, when we went to the store last night, they didn't have any purple beets, so they had golden beets. And they, and they didn't have good beet grains kind of looking dead. But you know what? They taste just fine, even when they look limp. So, so we don't always get turned off. We always buy them with the greens because beet greens are the best. I cooked them last night. I rinsed them off. I taste it. And they are, to me, beet greens are oddly salty. I think all the sweet gets put into the beet and everything else kind of goes up into the green. And the, I, they have a little bit of a, the way that celery is kind of salty, beet greens have this savory, salty flavor. So these are, the all this right here was all that right there. And what's so fun is after you boil the, the dickens out of your beets, um, peel them. We already have a video about this, but we love it's like it. It's sort of taking the skin off a giant fat snake. A, a, a beet shaped snake. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is like a big peel. And then you can, oop, you can just cut the little stump off on the end. And if it gets caught, you can also peel it. But uh, these are then ready to go. So I think a midday slice or two of beets, just like this, is great. And you can put on here mustard, you can put vinegar. Um, I also recommend. Um, I mean, this is a thought, but it's not always convenient. Is that in the while you're cooking your cereal, cook a whole lot of any kind of green. And you know those wide mouth uh, thermos jars. Just fill it with the greens, and then you have those greens for whenever you need them throughout the day. And they're they're still a little warm, and you can put a little vinegar on them. So, but do you, the size of all those greens shrinking down to just that little plate of greens. I want to show you here. People ask about handful raw versus handful cooked. Um, and one of our favorite plant-based eaters, John Stewart, had a great video about eating his greens with nutritional yeast. We love to do that. I'm not sure what greens he was eating, but I think they were cooked. So I want to show you now. This is spinach. It's organic spinach, and this is 10 ounces. And one handful of this would be, you know, maybe this much. And so, okay, let's just look at that. This thing is still almost full with a hand, handful of spinach. Actually, I'd be more generous. Um, this much spinach. I'm going to cook this right now while we're talking about the other greens. And as you know, spinach cooks down to almost nothing. So uh, we'll be able to compare that in a second. But I, I have strong feelings that you need the variety of the greens. Don't get stuck with spinach. Because spinach, they all sort of are like a symphony, and they all move into helping you in all sorts of good ways. So um, I, I tend to focus on kale, but I get all of the different greens in, and a lot of arugula. Arugula is really a powerful green. And how do you prepare your kale when you make it? How? Yes. What do you do? I strip it first. Just Let's because. just strip, because it's so fun to strip with you. My mom taught me how to strip. <laughs> One, two, three. Yay! And so you strip it and then you can chop it into a salad. You can cook it in water. Um, we, we boil it in water. Um, you can chop the, st the stems and cook them or this is put Swiss, them in soup. This is Swiss chard, which uh, has a colorful stem sometimes, sometimes not as, as I usually try and buy the red, Swiss ch red stem Swiss chard because I feel like it's got a lot more antioxidants. This is from our garden. 
I know, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, and then I want to talk about broccoli. What did I put? Oh. Broccoli, I always buy broccoli crowns. She doesn't like to buy the bro no, broccoli I, crowns. No, I like them. Um, but the reason I do it is that, that I always just take a little pot of water in the morning and I just as I just crack the the broccoli like this into the stem. And um, Dr. Michael Greger talks about some, I'm going to say it wrong, so I'm not going to say it right in the first place. You crack it open and something is released in the broccoli that helps fight cancer and disease. And it's released about 30 minutes after it's been broken or traumatized, like, you know, torn into these, these, these bits. So this is ready to go. I just put a lid on it. Wait, this wait, wait, you're missing. It's ridiculous. Jane, it is totally ridiculous not to eat this. You can just cut that a little bit. My spinach is little. done, I think. It's been cooking for like a hot second. Put this in. It's good. It's silly to waste any little bit of the broccoli. Jane. I know. I know. The pot's over there. do si do do si do and Here comes the spinach. If you're, if you're having a soup, the soup should be filled with absolutely any of these greens. If you're using, say, a recipe called for a tablespoon of parsley, forget it. Take the whole bunch, <laughs> use it all, and use the stems. There is nothing wrong with parsley or cilantro stems. So, you know, two to uh, one tablespoon, one bunch is, is great. And here comes Jane, 10 ounces oh, of spinach. cooked spinach. It is now spinach does tiny. disintegrate. It's tiny. It, it's too hot to, to handle right now, but it's tiny. How much ten ounces is? So, I mean, I really could eat this for my mid morning or mid afternoon snack if this was my my. You if know, you have one of my six. So, cooking your greens, it is remarkable how much smaller that turns. Look at that. What? How much? We, that's like maybe two cups or not even. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Now, the other thing, the other time when you, if you're desperate for greens, keep in your refrigerator three hearts of romaine. And when, I don't know, you suddenly realize, oh my gosh, we have no more greens. And you can pull out one of those hearts of romaine. Because, dang, you're so strong because you're plant-based. You twist this end off. And now you have this Draw. lovely little handful of scoops that you can use to eat whatever you're eating with or just munch on through the day or dip in your vinegar or dip in hummus and a, a, a hummus without oil, without tahini if you have heart disease. Perfect. Or it, it, it's, it's, it's just wonderful how it chops so easily if you suddenly need to add to your, to your, your salad for the night because um, you have lots of other goodies, maybe some fresh radish, radishes or some fresh cherry tomatoes from your garden, and you want to just bulk up the, the greens in your salad, there you go. Speaking of good chopping, here, let's make this. This is for tonight, so can you throw, I'm going to put some of that in there. I'm going to put some arugula in. An arugula? Can you bring it over, please? Do you know what arugula is called in, in uh, the U.K.? Do you know? Yes, yeah, rocket. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's called rocket because it just tastes like you just ate Mother Nature's rocket fuel, I think. And it is something else. Um, we just love how you can feel how it's making your nitric oxide expand. So let's leave it. Okay. Um, now, this is bok choy. And bok choy is a wonderful green. It can be eaten uh, raw, it can be eaten cooked, and it can be a, a, a dip, like a carrot stick. It can be um, cubed, whatever you want. It's really good in stir fries. I always call it like your most insecure friend. Like, oh my God, what are we doing now? We're cooked. Oh my God, are we raw? Oh my God, are we chopped? Oh my God, are we salad? Are we in a soup? And a cool thing about bok choy is that it really lasts a long time in the refrigerator. So if, if, if and get the baby bok choys too, they're nice. Yeah, so this is so this is going to go in our salad as well. You can do the white part. You can do up to the green part. It's just oh, you do it all. Do it all. And a very similar one to this in my eyes is Napa cabbage. And Napa is um, again easy to eat raw or cooked. And this is like a small child. Um, and 
it's quite they're, it's quite rubbery. Again, the raw cooked thing is wonderful about this. Um, so where else we have uh, asparagus you ate last night, uh, parsley, cilantro, basil, all those greens, herbs and things. They are so potent and powerful and wonderful. Can I put some of this in our salad? Mm -hmm. And just get them in there. My mom just uses all the stems of everything we eat, so she's made me be quite bold as far as being um, a stem eater. And I bet you don't even notice when you're eating a stem. You just don't because they they vanish, especially well, if you cut them small. And especially if you're Jane part... Jane did not do a good job cutting these stems. If you're part goat. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think I think we're through a lot of Essie's uh, greens. But, and and it'll put them in burritos, put them in your sandwiches. If you're making, a, if you're having a pizza, put a, a, a whole head of kale into a half a jar of pasta sauce, mix them together and spread that first on the pizza. My favorite thing of all is a kale sandwich where you take um, some bread and hummus and then thin slices of lemon, thin, thin, and just pile it high with kale. It's hot you know, two or three cups, and then put some lemon on top of that, and on top of that, a little lemon pepper. Such a cool way to get lots of your greens. But you know, greens are wonderful just as a side dish, sitting right there. Put a little oh, yeah. balsamic vinegar on them. Or it's nutritional perfect. yeast. We get it in bulk, but you can also get it like this. Nutritional oh, yeah. yeast is great. This is what John Stewart was eating on his green, on his yeah, his cooked greens, and he was eating, I think, more nutritional yeast than greens at the end of it. Um, and uh, last thing, is it doesn't look like a green, but it is, is cauliflower. And we eat this much the way that we eat broccoli, uh, steamed, lightly boiled, or cooked till it's soft enough. We also roast it with this wonderful hummus um, topping. Where are you going with those? Um, and uh, with... Look and, what Jane did. This is getting ready for tonight. Beautiful. And so beautiful. then lots of different ways. Oh, buffalo. We make buffalo cauliflower wings. We'll make buffalo cauliflower wings sometime. We haven't done that yet. All right. But you can just put, just chop up cauliflower, put it in a, on parchment paper and roast it. You don't need to even put anything on it or put some nutritional yeast and a little balsamic vinegar. And vinegar. it is delicious. Okay. Yeah. Acid queen, of course. Okay. Just, just green your life up. Greens, greens, Every way greens. you can. All right. Thank you. Let us know how you eat your greens if we forgot one. Bye.